Have you heard of the passive house standard for building? This is a really high building standard that calls for super insulation, a super airtight shell, amazing indoor air quality, such that you could coast for days with the power out and you wouldn't even have to heat the house because it's so well insulated. On the build show today, we're taking a look at this 1913 bungalow in the heart of Austin, Texas, right near downtown, that's getting rebuilt to those standards. Let's go inside and meet the builder and the architect, and we're gonna dig into all the details and learn something about this house. Let's take a look. Oh, this 100-year-old house is looking good. We got some insulation from rock wool we've got some triple glaze marvins going on this looks really good hey there he is hey matt trey good to see you man you too guys let me introduce you to trey farmer the architect in this project with forgecraft architecture beautiful house man i love it thanks appreciate it so not only did uh, i design this house with my wife but uh this is our house hey your personal house thanks for letting us in i yeah, appreciate thanks it thanks for coming so tell us the 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 background this house is about 100 years old and it looks like you've got maybe addition on the back here as well yeah so it's a 1914 craftsman we added about 50 percent more onto the back um, so we kept the original house looking original, mm -hmm. we obviously updated it to the Love fast fast standard. And then the addition is a more contemporary modern, uh, you know, piece that we worked on with Hugh Jefferson Randolph. Oh so man, that's beautiful. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Now, not everybody watching this is going to know the passive house standard. Tell us what that's all about. So for us, it was really about indoor air quality, uh, comfort, durability, and energy efficiency. Okay. So uh, basically, we added more insulation than code, about double in the walls. Wow, double the insulation value of code. How about that? In some places, yeah. Um, and then air tightness was probably the biggest lift. So it has to be super airtight, yeah. 10 times more yeah. tight than code. For sure. So basically, you're building a Yeti cooler, right? You've got a super insulated box, and you've got a super tight lid on that cooler. Yep. So you're going to keep that cooling inside. Yeah. Now tell me about the assembly. I'm seeing uh, some Rockwell bats here. What am I looking at? Yeah, so that's a two by six wall with the Rockwell R23 bats. Okay. And then for sheathing, we use the R6 uh, zip system. So it's ah. an inch of poly ISO and then the, the OSB outbound of that. Okay, so this is zip R. <laughs> We've done some videos on this before. This is a poly ISO board bonded to zip. So when this gets nailed through, the poly ISO is actually continuous in between the studs and the outdoor sheathing, which makes for me as the builder a really easy install because now I'm doing all my air tightness on the outside. Mm -hmm. I'm installing my windows on the outside. I don't have any of those exterior insulation details or thicknesses I need to worry about. That's great. Now tell me what's going on on the roof here. Normally when I see a conditioned attic and ducts in the condition space, I'm seeing closed cell, maybe open cell foam, but I'm not seeing that here. What'd you do? We stuck with the, uh, the rock wool, and so we actually have double deep <coughs> rock wool bats. So we have the 23 plus a 15, so we have an R38 roof assembly wow. with no foam. So we decided because it's so airtight, we wanted to keep the foam out of the house. Impressive, man. And I think you told me <coughs> Hinkle Insulation did this. This is really a great A install. The guys did a really, really nice job. Now tell me about the indoor air quality piece that you mentioned. What have you done for indoor air quality in this house, Troy? Well, so once you get really airtight, as you do with your homes, and as we're doing with this one, uh, you, have, you get into some interesting areas. So yeah. we basically, like you said, the Yeti cooler is sort of the envelope, mm -hmm. and then we need to put a nose on that, because people need to breathe. Yep. Our buildings don't need to breathe, That's right. but we do. That's right. So we have an ERV, Panasonic ERV up there, that's constantly bringing in fresh air, dropping the dehumidity, dropping the heat out of it, then putting it into the house, and then constantly exhausting stale air from the house. That's beautiful. Why don't we do a separate video, actually, on the mechanical system here? There's so much to see on that mechanical system. I really like it. Sounds good. I want to get you up there. But before we do that, let's talk about air tightness and how you get there. So with the Zip R and with all the details you did on the outside, tell me about your blower door test that you did prior to hanging sheetrock. So, uh, Basically, with all the tape and everything and air sealing, and we were able to get to 0.9 ACH okay. just with you know sweat and pookie. <laughs> uh, and but for passive house, we had to get even lower than that. And so in order to do that, we had to call an aero barrier. And so I know they've been on your show. Yeah, I like those guys. Yeah, so they came in. They brought it down to 0.2 in a couple hours. 
Dang. It's incredible. I would say that's probably a big portion out of your crawl space, right? We're on a 1913 crawl space. Mm -hmm. He kept all that framing. He redecked that. But anytime you've got a crawl space that's a vented crawl space in a house, you've got just a, a mile of tiny cracks mm -hmm. that could be leaking air into your envelope. So that's probably where that air barrier made a huge difference. Uh, on getting you from point nine. And I had the exact same situation. Yeah. I built an incredibly tight house that had a one ACH 50, then brought it down to like point two with air barrier. So that's that's a great safe way to know we can get down to those really tight standards. Yeah. Uh, Trey, tell me about the window package you've got in the house. I saw some triple glaze over here. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you have going on. Yeah, so we worked with Marvin um, and you can see we have this sort of faux double hung. So mm -hmm. they're fixed in casement windows. We did that for air tightness measures. Um, and so those are the integrity clad windows. Okay. It's a wood window. Um, those are great, man. And from the street, I thought those were double hung. So good, good fake on those. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to, you know, maintain that historic integrity of the old house. Yep. Um, and then on the new house, we went the Marvin Moderns. Ah, that's these sleek ones I'm seeing right mm -hmm. here. Really thin sight lines, angular. And some of those are triple glaze too, right? Yeah, yeah, they, they come in a triple glaze, so they've got a 0.15 U-factor. 0.15, double the traditional mm -hmm. uh, U-factors that I'm seeing for most uh, double pane, low E, argon filled type products. That's approximately an R7, so you're going from an R3 point something to an R7 window, that's double the insulation value. So not only are your walls doubled, but your windows have doubled in insulation value. Yep. I think it's interesting how you did a nice mix of the Marvin Integrity, which is a fiberglass window with a wood cladding on mm -hmm. the inside, and their Contemporary Series, which is a, uh, I'm sorry, Marvin Modern, right? Mm -hmm. That's an all fiberglass window. And I also like that in your bathroom over here, you used a black Integrity finished window because um, it's in kind of a wet area that has a full fiberglass interior. So great mm -hmm. job on the window package. Great house, man. Impressive. We're going to come back and shoot a couple other videos on the details. But next, let's go talk to Blake from CleanTag, the builder. And I want to look at some crawl space details. We'll see you down there. Perfect. Just two builders hanging out under the house. Hey, Blake. Good to see you, brother. Hi, Matt. Great job. This is Blake Smith with CleanTag. Blake, this is a pretty typical Texas crawl space. 100-year-old house. Looks great. Now, tell me about your insulation strategy down here. Uh, this is a closed cell foam. Um, it's an air barrier and moisture barrier. Okay. So foam instead of bat insulation, is that right? Correct. And the big deal on the foam, though, is because it's closed cell, it's, it's going to be a vapor barrier. So if we get high moisture down here in the crawl space, it's not going to migrate into the house. Plus two inches of closed cell is going to perform as an air barrier as well. But what am I seeing here? You've got this blue barrier on the whole outside rim board. What's going on there? That's a poly wall. And basically, we wrapped the um, framing all the way da up, down, and up, and then put a flashing, tape flashing on the outside, and then sprayed the closed cell all the way up to the poly wall on the inside for a complete air barrier. Got it. So it's continuity of air barrier. In other words, this 2 by 10 rim board, you basically put a U-shaped um, piece of poly wall blue barrier fluid applied on that. So your zip sheathing is connected on the outside and on the inside where this crawl space is, we've connected the closed cell foam to the poly wall. Great detail, man. Impressive. Super beautiful house. Impressive job by the architect and the builder here to take this 100-year-old house to be on today's standards with Passive House. I'll put a link to the builder, to the architect, to some of the standards and some of the products we talked about on today's episode, but stay tuned for some future videos here. There's a couple other things I wanna talk about, so we're gonna come back here and show a few other things. If you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Otherwise, follow us on Twitter or Instagram. We'll see you next time on The Build Show.